friends, this is Petal and a um, little bit of facts and decents extra. Um, I know Pam, thank you Pam, did a fantastic job um, a few days ago uh, with her first post, yay! <laughs> I was having some technical issues, I have like a new phone and a new iPad and new, you know, because everything I, when you do video, it's just, it takes up so much space. So my old ones had ran out of space and it was malfunctioning and everything and so i had to get new equipment and then i couldn't get logged on and it would it just this little three ring circus of me with my passwords not being able to log on and it was just a mess and so thank you pam <laughs> pam took over and i was like bless her heart because i was so frustrated so i couldn't do it so anyway um you know, uh, so I just thought today, I know Pam and I are going to get together uh, back over the weekend. We're back at work. She's working and our schedules are crazy. So now we're like two ships passing in the night <laughs> with our schedules. So we're going to be back recording on Sunday. And so we'll come back together and do some stuff. And I know she mentioned about Jersey. We're excited to be talking about that. But um, a lot of stuff has been going on. And I just thought I'd pop in and say hello. I miss you all so much. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, normally um, our show is about our faves in Montecito, Harry, Megan, Archie, Baby Lily, or oh, goddess of Montecito, Baby Lily, <laughs> uh, Guy, Pula, the chickens, and oh, uh, Mama Doria, don't forget, I'm forgetting Mama Doria. Anyway, normally our show is about them, but they're on vacay right now. They are on maternity and paternity leave. So we are gonna leave our faves in Montecito to enjoy their break, to enjoy their peace. As Megan said, peaceful under a tree is me every day. So we're just gonna leave them there to enjoy their peace, probably drinking some clever latte under a tree, reading a book, you know, running around with Archie and pooing at baby Lily. So we're just gonna leave them to their peace and we're going to just do a little bit of stuff because um, I want to do a few of these episodes about the British Royals. And a lot has been in, in the press lately about their wretched ways. And so I want to um, I wanted to just sort of pop in and talk a little bit about the wretchedness of those royals <laughs> and um, which is knows no bounds, you know, apart from Prince Andrew still hiding from the FBI and apparently um, his security has been turning away people who want to, you know, hand him his summons for that court case um, um, with uh, Virginia um, Goofy Roberts, who is trying to get him into court to testify or say something or, you know, speak to the FBI, whatever. And Andrew has been running away and the queen has been hiding him under her skirt in Balmoral, as we know. And so apparently today I saw that uh, Prince Andrew is back at Balmoral and with Fergie and in tow back at Balmoral, back to hiding under the queen's skirt, you know. Also, I just saw today that um, they, the royal family are, are doing a BBC One or BBC Two special about uh, Prince Philip's funeral, uh, Prince Philip's death, apparently. Um, Harry is supposed to be a part of it and William. And frankly, that just seems to me that they are just, you know, they're just trying to distract from the fact that the stuff that's going on with Prince Andrew and also Prince Charles. Um, I know a lot of you might, you know, may or may not have read, if you're not in, you know, if you haven't been paying attention to what's going on in England, um, Prince Charles has been up to his ears in mess, in corruption. And um, so that's why I wanted to pop in just, you know, I'm gonna do a few of these episodes really short about Prince Charles's corruption. And if you've been reading, you know, if I hadn't been reading up about Prince Charles a little bit and finding out about how he funds his, um, his charities and how he funds, like, for example, you know, Dumfries House and all these, you know, properties that he has that it's for charity. Um, if you hadn't been reading up, this may come as a shock. You know, yes, I didn't know some of the things that he was doing, but after reading Sally Bidell's book with Prince Charles always being in America, 
hooking up his rich um, philanthropist friends for money, I would have been bowled over. But because I've been reading that, I was like, hmm, yeah, this goes right along with what I've been reading. So I'm not surprised to learn about Prince Charles' shady dealings with um, financing some of his charities. So one of the things um, in late July, actually July 31st, there was this curious article in the Times about Prince Charles being involved, his name being involved in a pay, um, a pay for play or cash for access um, scheme. And this scheme was run by Ben Elliott. And if you don't know who Ben Elliott is, Ben Elliott is the nephew of Camilla Parker Bowles, which is the nephew also of Prince Charles by marriage. And so he is all up, you know, he is a businessman. I'm sorry, he is a, an entrepreneur and I guess a philanthropist. <laughs> you know, and you, you have to do those air quotes for the royal family when it comes to charity and philanthropy <laughs> because it's always a bit shady. So anyway, um, ben, um, ben Elliott um, is very much known. Um, in, the, in fact, he raised funds for the Queen's 2012 Jubilee. He is um, done fundraisers for the royal family. He actually even did one for Prince Harry, I think for Santibali. So his prowess as a um, party planner is, was used liberally in the royal family. He owns this company called Quintessentially, and Quintessentially is one of those posh concierge, concierge service for the wealthy. So think anything that, you know, is possibly impossible to get, you know, maybe say last minute ticket to Wimbledon or booking a private jet that you could never be able to book on your own or, you know, getting reservations to a restaurant that you could never get reservations into or, you know, simple stuff as renting a car when all the cars are seemingly not available quintessentially can provide those services if you have the money to pay for it. And so this is a, um, a company where they, the rich and famous, or at least the rich, you don't have to be famous, the rich, at least the very wealthy, they are part of his, or at least he recruits them to be part of his concierge service or club, shall we say. And so in this club, there are these tiers, you know, the lower tiers, maybe you'll be able to book, say flowers or rent a car or something like that. On other levels, maybe that's where you get to the, you know, they'll be able to rent a jet for you or a private jet or something like that for you. And then, but they, they have the top level. So the top level is where you pay 15,000 uh, 15, pounds a year or $20,000 a year. And this is the level where that opens up the world to you. As you know, one of their clients called it, it's called, you know, instead of, you know, pay for play or cash for access, he calls it access capitalism. You know, the buzzword for rich people, access capitalism. And this is what opens up the world to you. It opens up relationship, relationships or it opens up access to the world of politics or so politicians that you will never, ever be able to meet on your own. If you join Ben's club and pay them, you know, $15,000 a year, guess what? You can meet Boris Johnson. You can go to 10 Downing Street, meet Boris Johnson, have dinner with Boris Johnson or whatever MP you want to, you know. It also opens up the royal family. It opens you to the world of royalty where you can have dinner with Prince Charles, say, at Clarence House or High Grove or Balmoral or <laughs> Buckingham Palace or Dumfries House. And Keep Dumfries House in mind because I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be coming back in with a bunch of, um, a few of these little episodes. But Dumfries House is something to keep in mind because it's going to be playing quite a bit. So enter one of um, Ben Elliott's clients, uh, longtime clients, Muhammad Mercy. And Muhammad Mercy is one of those people. He's a, mil a multi-millionaire telecom. He owns or runs a telecom company. And, you know, he is very wealthy. He um, 
his wife is Russian. So his business, actually, he does a lot of business in the Middle East. He does a lot of business in Russia. And those seems to be very prevalent in the royal family. They love Russians and they love the Middle East. And so Prince Andrew was killed, you know, knocked for all of his Middle East contacts. What people don't realize is Prince Charles is just as heavily involved in the Middle East as is Andrew. We'll get to that in another episode. But you know, one of the things that one of the things I want to, you know, do with these little episodes is look at, you know, the way to really find out who these rich people are is following the money. Follow the things that, you know, follow their track, the money track, the money trail, basically. And so these from these exposés that came out is all about following the money. And the money always tends to, lead, you know, come from or lead to Russia or <laughs> Middle East. So anyway, Mohammed Mercy, this multimillionaire telecom owner who becomes a member of Ben Elliott's club. He is in the top tier. He got the top tier membership, $15,000, whatever. One of the perks of this $15,000 a year uh, membership is access to HRH himself, Prince Charles. And the perks are that they would take, um, you know, Mr. Mercy uh, actually was living in New York. He had just um, moved and now lives in England. And they would fly him from England via a private jet to Scotland where Dumfries house is. And they'll be able to stay on that. him and his wife, uh, Nadia, uh, Mr. and Mrs. wife, Nadia, would be able to stay over at Dumfries' house uh, for the night. They will get to have tea. Um, they'll be able to see the land, see the property. And, and also, they'll be able to meet um, Prince Charles and have dinner with Prince Charles. So that's what was promised. And the only hiccup that happened with that because of bad weather, they weren't able to do the private jet. But, you know, they took a commercial jet. And they were picked up at the airport, chauffeur driven to Dumfries' house, had tea, saw the property that afternoon. That evening, they had dinner with HRH himself, candlelight dinner with chandeliers and a whole bit uh, with HRH himself. And they talked about their, about their charities and all of those things because Mr. Um, Mercy was very impressed with Prince Charles's work. And that's one thing. I mean, you can knock Prince Charles for a lot of things. The one thing you can't knock Prince Charles for is his work ethics. He really pursues his passion. And so Mr. Mercy was very impressed with Prince Charles's work. And so they talked about that because the, um, the promise was that you can talk to Prince Charles about whatever, you know, anything you want. And so they talked about that. They were very excited. Um, he was shown the property. Um, and so they stayed the night and then left the next day. And then the following day, they received the letters, thank you, you know, from Dumfries House, the, um, the director, I guess, of Dumfries House. And in that letter, um, they mentioned another person, Michael Fawcett. And Michael Fawcett was very happy that they came. And also from Michael Fawcett was an invitation for Mr. Mercy to be able to donate money. There's a wall garden that could be named after you for a certain amount. So there was a donation letter, donate to our charity, you know, and get your name, get it named after you, you know. And promptly after, Mr. Mercy sent $130,000 to Dumfries House. And Michael Fawcett, you know, send him back the letter. It's like, wow, yes, we received, you know, he actually asked his bank to transfer the money to Dumfries House. and. Michael Fawcett, send him a thank you. Yes, we received the money. Keep Michael Fawcett in your mind because we're going to get back to, to Michael Fawcett. So the issue with this is that Mr. Mercy said that he would not have access to this had he not paid for it, you know? And again, there's nothing wrong with him joining a club where they have privileged and all privileged stuff like private jets and all of that. The problem comes in with his relationship with Prince Charles. The only way he would have a kind of access and to be able to do the things he did with Prince Charles is because he paid money. 
And that's where the problem is that he would not have the access, be invited to Dumfries house, having dinner with Prince Charles and all of those things, had he not paid for it. Hence the pay for access. And also when this came out, it was more, you know, the response was basically, well, Prince Charles had no idea. You know, there's nothing wrong with Ben, you know, introducing his rich clients to him. I, I, absolutely not. You know, you have rich clients and Prince Charles is always doing charity stuff and he's always fundraising for some charity or some something like that. That's fine. He could introduce. The problem again comes back in the access. How did Ben and Mercy get access to Prince Charles? And did Prince Charles know that Ben and Mercy was be, you know, was paying for that access? You know, and so the thing that came out was that, oh, well, Prince Charles had no idea. He is just a victim in this whole thing. And it's all Ben Elliott. Ben Elliott is charging people basically to use Prince Charles. And, you know, and the thing was like, no, Prince Charles is an innocent little lamb. The problem with all of this is quintessentially actually use Prince Charles in their promotion. You know, Prince Charles, I think, was in their promotion, so, you know, louding. Ben Elliott's company. So the idea that Prince Charles doesn't know, you know, and again, there's no evidence in this that says, you know, specifically that Prince Charles, but what are the chances that Prince Charles did not know? That that's how Mr. Mercy came by, you know, to see him. And so in all of this, from his relationship with Mr. Mercy, Mr. Mercy, from that time, he, you know, the, after the first time they met, you know, and Mr. Mercy gave him that 100,000, uh, 130,000 pounds. Mr. Mercy then started constantly giving money to Prince Charles's charities and his and stuff that he's looking for funding. Um, Mr. Mercy, but in the end, you know, donated over $1.2 million to Prince Charles's charities. In 2015, Prince Charles then named Mr. Amercy as a trustee for his Princess Trust International, you know, organization that help young people to get jobs and all of that stuff. He named Mr. Amercy uh, a trustee. It's a position that Mr. Amercy left actually this year in April, he resigned from that, that position. Mr. Amercy was asked if he was part of a pay for play scheme. And his response is basically that it, you know, he's like, um, you call it pay for play and I call it access capitalism. It's the same point. You get access, you get invitations, you get privileged relationships if you are part of the setup and where you are financially making a contribution to be part of the setup. So absolutely. Although Ben Elliott, this, you know, completely denied that he, his company, was basically selling access to the royal family. Um, one of so an insider from quintessentially was like, "Yeah, they're absolutely selling access to the royal family. They, in fact, used Ben Elliot. In fact, used his royal connections to upsell people. You know, in the lower tier, you know, if they wanted, you know, if they, you know, wanted someone to or to entice someone to, you know, get to the higher." to the higher um, levels of quintessentially, one of the things they would do is that he would use his royal connections. You know, he would be like, you know, I know you're at this, this level, but you know, if you moved up to the higher level, you know, we can maybe get you tickets to Elton John or, you know, the people at that level, the high level have, you know, met HRH or they have met, you know, been to events with the royal family. And so this is a way, some of the ways that he would entice people to come, basically using his access to the royal family to purchase or to upsell to the higher uh, levels of his company. And did Prince Charles know that he was doing it? I don't know. So one of the main charges against um, Quincy Essentially and Ben Elliott is that he recruits people to his company by offering them an introduction to Prince Charles. That is the thing, that is the paid for access to royal family and basically cash for royal access. And 
Ben, although Ben Elliott has denied this, but the evidence is there, you know, that that is what happening because Mr. Mercy paid for his membership and guess what he got? Access to Prince Charles, exactly as they said what happened, that is what he got. Ben Elliott claimed that it's a separate thing, that, you know, it's because Mr. Mercy was interested in Prince Charles's charity. It wasn't part of the membership. Mr. Mercy said differently. It's like when you pay, when you have that money, it opens up and that is part of the deal. Ben Elliott claimed it's different. Mr. Mercy said, nope, that's, what it, that's the deal. And exactly what that email said to Mr. Mercy, that is exactly what happened. Yeah, there are no hard evidence that Prince Charles knew about it, but it's hard for me to believe that Prince Charles, a man who has been doing this for, involved in charity for this long and working with donors has a foundation, therefore he has a committee of people that would, would be vetting donors, that would be vetting the people that come into contact with his company, who he is taking all this money from. Again, Mr. Emerson has donated up to uh, over $1.2 million to Prince Charles's various foundation, you know, various charitable initiatives. Wouldn't your committee vet these people to know exactly everything about them before they take that kind of money from them? Wouldn't they be vetting um, Ben Elliott's company to see how exactly, you know, he came into contact with Mr. Mercy? So he has a board, he has all of those people, many of whom are from the financial world, you know? So they would have, some kind of knowledge about the people that they are taking money from. So when this article came out in July, on July 31st, again, Charles's people were like, no, no, Prince Charles, Prince Charles is collateral damage. He had nothing to do with what Ben Elliott was doing. He just, you know, meet the client, whatever, and, and, and the client decide to donate to his charities. And so Prince Charles had nothing to do with this. It's embarrassing, yes, because you know, you know, he doesn't want his name attached to a pay-for-play um, scheme or selling access or selling royal access to, you know, to rich, rich um, donors. Um, you don't want, you know, because that will literally be selling the royal family for money. Basically, is what it is. And you know, Prince Charles, oh, he is, he's the future king. We don't want him. You know his name attached to that. He, is, he he doesn't know what Ben Elliott is doing. He's collateral damage. You know, and so this yes, very embarrassing for the royal family. Very embarrassing, I'm sure, for Prince Charles. And in royal form, when you when something comes up that is embarrassing to you, what do you do? You find another family member to throw under the bus. So <laughs> all of a sudden, in pops. Princess Eugenie's husband, Jack Brookbrands. And same day this comes out, all of a sudden we get pictures of Jack Brookbrand in Italy, Capri, I guess, on a yacht with uh, topless models posing and swimming in the ocean. You know, nothing salacious. They weren't doing anything. I mean, he was taking a photo with um, one of the women, then they came out of the water and one of the women was topless. There was nothing shown, but it's not the best look when you have a wife and a young baby at home, you know, wife taking care of a young baby and you're cavorting with topless models in, you know, in Italy. It's not the best look. It wasn't the wisest thing. But again, it's what the royal family do. What they do when they want to hide something or something that they don't want the public to know, again, they throw a family member under the bus. And this is exactly what that was, throwing a family member under a bus. And, you know, I'm sure Jack Brand had a lot, a lot of explaining to do to Princess Eugenie. But, you know, again, that's all that was. If the story had come out about the Sussexes, that they were the ones that were involved in a cash for access scheme, what would the press be doing about that? You know? There was none. The royal reporters went silent. At least the majority of them went silent. The, the ones that usually scream are screaming about the Sussexes and all the ways that they think the Sussexes is going to sell the royal family name and, you know, 
use the royal family name for money and all of those things. You remember all those things they were saying about the Sussexes when they signed the deals with uh, Spotify and Netflix, especially how the, the, the Sussexes were going to be ruining the royal family name and using the royal family name for cash and all of those things. Remember all of those people? All of a sudden, this comes out about Prince Charles and silence, crickets. Nobody's saying a word. Press isn't reporting about it. Royal reporters are silent. Nobody's saying a word about it. They're trying, I mean, they're <laughs> trying every single thing other than talking about the fact that the things that they were accusing Harry and Meghan of doing that possibly the future King of England was involved in. Isn't that interesting? And nobody called for his, his title. Nobody called for him to be stripped of his title. Nobody called for him to, you know, be stripped of his, you know, being next in line to the throne because this is, I mean, nobody, no one was talking about this possible thing that the possibility of Prince Charles selling access to the royal family could destroy the royal family, could tear the royal family down, could cause the royal family to be abolished. All the things that they were saying that the Spotify deal and the, you know, the, Netflix deal and the Sussex is moving away and the Oprah window, all the things that they were saying that Harry and Meghan were doing. And nobody is saying that he is going to bring down the royal family. Nobody is saying that he's going to destroy the royal family. Nobody is calling about stripping him of his title. And yet with no evidence, this is what they were called, they were saying about Harry and Meghan. Mr. Mercy donated one point five at least $1.2 million to Charles's charities. Nobody has asked Prince Charles to give him back his money. So again, you know, we talk about the, the hypocrisy and the double standard for how they treat, how the press and how many, you know, critics of the Sussex, they treat the Sussexes and they treat the, the, the rest of the royal family. It's like, it's okay for the white royals to sell access possibly, because we're gonna get to more in our next episode, but it's possibly for the, the white royals to possibly sell access to the royal family. But it's not okay for Harry and Meghan to use the royal family name because apparently they're going to destroy the royal family brand so it's okay, but it's okay for the, the white royals to sell access or to sell the royal family brand. But it's not okay for Meghan and Harry. It's not okay for them to even use the word royal. It's not okay for them to have Sussex Royal Instagram. Nothing that has to do with royal. They are pretty much, they can't have it. Yet, here is Prince Charles possibly selling access to the royal. Pretty much selling out the royal brand. And nobody is calling for him to be stripped of his title. Nobody is calling for him to be taken out of or asking him to step out from being the next in line to the throne. Nobody is asking any of those things. And that is the hypocrisy that we're seeing. So, so that's it for this episode. I would love to hear your two cents worth on this topic. I'm sure a lot of you have read the, read the article or articles. If you haven't, I'm going to post a link in the show notes. So um, definitely use that link because um, that way we're not giving Rupert Murdoch. If you click on the Times article from the Times that is owned by Rupert Murdoch and you're basically putting money into his pocket. But if you use this link, it's archived. So there you get to read it and Rupert Murdoch gets no money. So use the link that I'm going to put in the show notes. Um, so yeah, and I love to hear your thoughts on what you think and that, uh, about this and all that's going on because there's a lot more to come. We're going to be touching on more of this as there are other stories that's come out about Prince Charles's grift, basically. <laughs> Also, guys, um, thank you so much for those of you who have supported us. I just to let you know, there's a link in our show notes for uh, PayPal or Cash App. Um, if you're interested in supporting us, please thank you so much. Again, you, there's no obligation, but if you like what we're doing and you'd like to support us, thank you very much. Also, my favorite way um, is 
our merchandise. You know, we do have merchandise. One of my favorite, favorite things in the world is our merchandise. This is my favorite thing. I am a mug person. I am so not like Megan in that way. She's into fine china. I will break that in a second. So I am a mug person. The bigger, the better. <laughs> so that's how I take everything. I love a lot of tea. So I like my big mugs. So anyway, um, feel free to click on the site, purchase some. That helps us too. And then it gives you something as well. So um, so thank you again in advance. No, again, no obligation, but if you want to, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I will be back shortly. Um, I will be back and I will, we'll pick up this subject and we can discuss, but I think it's so important to know to have these kind of backgrounds so that when those royal cockroaches decide to come at, you know, the successes with nonsense about where they get their finances, we are armed with this information. Be like, ah, oh, before you come at the Sussex, you got to deal with your own mess. You got to deal with your own grifting in the royal family before you have, can say anything about the Sussexes. So that's why I think these are so important to talk about. So anyways, thank you guys. And I will see you shortly.